25% of people who give competitive exams like JE, BITS, and NAPS exam get at least one question in the whole exam paper. Guessing is basically a very important and integral part of every exam because you know there are some questions that you can't sure about and you have to take a guess. Take you know leave it to luck. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to guess intelligently and ensure that you have the least risk possible and having uh, the highest returns on marks possible. Without further ado, here we go. So before I tell you like the three main ways to guess, I'm gonna give you some background preliminary information. So if the options has the word none of the above, then 70% of the cases none of the above is not the answer. Okay. But if it has all of the above as D option, then that is 70 to 80 percent the right answer because they have like uh, two or three close options and then all of the above, which is usually the answer. Okay, so these two are like basic points that you need to know. Also, uh, another thing that I've used in my mid sense also is suppose option A is three by nine, option B is five by nine, option C is uh, five by eleven. Okay, then upper ka five is common in two, niche ka nine is common in two. So usually the answer is the common one five by nine. Okay. This is a very random thing, but uh, I've gotten a lot of marks because of this in JE and even in my college exam. So yeah, these tips sort of work. Okay. Now let's get started with the three ways to guess intelligently. So number one is the elimination method in which, for example, you know, none of these is not the option or, uh, you know, you, you say one, one you know, of the options is pakka, not the answer. Then uh, you sort of eliminate another one. And if it's like a 50, 50 chance, then hundred percent you should guess. Okay. So uh, you're, what you're basically doing with elimination is you're bringing that probability higher. Okay, if it's four options, your probability is 25%. If it's three options, 33, and then two options with 50. It's highest when you're at 50, and then just guess. Okay? Uh, method two is you know context clues. So for example, if a question has some sort of a question, usually has a lot of hints in it. Okay, especially if it's like a physics question or like something like that. Okay, numericals mostly. Uh, they have a lot of hints in them and somewhere there's like this one piece of information or one sort of uh, statistic which is given to like sort of lead you to the right answer even if you don't know the you know, actual answer okay so look out for those be alert for those and then figure out which thing are they actually directing you towards okay sometimes this may backfire when they're leading you towards the wrong answer but most of the times you get it right okay and number three is probably the worst way to guess it's not intelligently uh, just go for option B because statistically option B is the answer much more often than any other, any other option. Usually A and D are not the options, the answers and that's a plain yes. Usually A and D are not the answers, it's either B or C and even B or C mean B is statistically the highest probability you know, guess that you can take, non-intelligent guess that you can take. Here are some of the mistakes and like things that you should avoid while guessing intelligently in your uh, mock test and even in your final exam. So I've done these mistakes a lot in the, in the exams that I've given. And they've cost me a lot of, you know, mental pain during the exam and also like sort of regret after the exam. So number one is changing your answer. Uh, if you say, okay, by elimination, you figure out that it's either B or C and then you go B and then you're like, it's maybe C, you know, for example, if you come after a, the second iteration, you come back to that question. Uh, if you don't know what iteration is, I'm talking about the mock test strategy that I spoke about in another video. Okay. Uh, so yeah, suppose you come after an iteration, you come to that question, you're like, it might be C, it might be B. Okay, and then you change the B to C and then after the exam, you figure out the answer is B. So that fails a lot. Okay, so don't do that. If you get, if you say B, then stick to B. Okay, don't change it. Okay? And number two, this is a problem that a lot of people in society in general deal with. It's overthinking. Okay, you, you think, okay, it might be B, it also might be C, it also might be A. This is when your elimination hasn't worked and you're trying to do context based things or like the three by nine, five by nine thing that I spoke about. This uh, takes away a lot of time during the exam and a lot of your mental capacity during the exam. You're like, what if this, what if that? Don't do that. Keep it simple. They're not so, you know, they're not so hell-bent on distracting you from the actual answer. Sometimes they just want you to get marks, okay? So don't overthink it and don't change your answers too often, okay? Now you need to practice these intelligent guessing uh, methods in your mock test before going to the actual exam and doing this and see which one works for you, okay? Maybe elimination is the best for you or maybe uh, picking B is the best for you, I don't know. But try these out in your mock test and then try it in the final J or whatever you're doing. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. All the best. All the best.